Time is now 7.22. We now have a quorum. And so the December 8th, 2021 meeting of the Arbor Conservation Commission uh, can go forward. <clears throat> so in addition to Ms. Langley, who's uh, attending online, and Mr. Cunningham, uh, Top Dollar is present, I am president, present, and I am uh, Muckle Barlow Chair. This conference will now be recorded. So we are now calling this meeting to order at 7.23 p.m. Uh, this meeting is being conducted both in person and remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which was extended on June 16 of 2021. <clears throat> uh, for this meeting, the, the commission is convening either in person or by remote participation for the public. For the public to join the meeting remotely by telephone, uh, you may call 1-408-650-3123. And then our access code 942-845-549. Where the public can join by a computer at go to meeting.com backslash join backslash 942-845-549. The remote access uh, information has been posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded by Auburn Cable Television. <clears throat> and I shall also note, aside from members of the commission that are attending, we also have in attendance uh, our building commissioner, Caleb Moody, and our land use clerk, Ginger Buto. All right. <clears throat> so anyone who's participating remotely, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. And please take care not to screen share your computer because anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, all supporting materials for tonight's uh, meeting have been provided, um, have, are available on the town's website and they have been provided to us members. And the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. <clears throat> so with respect to tonight's meeting, uh, these are the, the ground rules. The first is that I will introduce um, each speaker or item on the agenda. After that person includes their remarks, uh, I will ask other members of the commission if they have any questions or comments or motions. Um, and I would just remind everyone to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate uh, minutes. And then for any response, um, if there is any response, wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. And then if you wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do, do so through the chair. Um, and at, <clears throat> with that, the first item on tonight's agenda is the 7 p.m. public hearing EBT Environmental Consultants, Inc., a notice of intent to construct a single family home with associated utilities driveway and site grading at 54 Prospect Street. Is there a motion open? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Ms. Kravosky. Thank you, sir, Mr. Garland. Good evening, Mr. Garland. Good evening. Mr. Cunningham. Uh, will it be on the screen by chance? I am pulling it up right now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garvin, you had said that you might have, uh, and in this case, you might have looked at the slot. I'm not sure ahead of time. We did. Thank you. So as we can see that the lot was cleared prior to my involvement. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I yes. show us. Uh, these are the same people that bought the uh, Richard Fawn duplex over at Pioneer at the corner. Remember the problems we mm -hmm. had over there? Sure. And then there was a lot to the left. There was a duplex. Mm -hmm. These people bought it. I, I think they're rookie in development because when I got involved with it, I, when I drove up there a few months ago, obviously noticed it cleared, asked them what they thought they were doing. They didn't think they had done anything. They know now they have. So we're, um, we did have a delineation that was done at the time. There was about 10 inches of wood chip on top of everything. So nothing was showing on the ground. I didn't know what stumps were there. And mm -hmm. we did describe uh, McClure Engineering had had this delineated, as we describe here, in uh, 2010 of 2020. Jarvis Land Surveying had done it. It was a delineation. There was no vegetation for me to look at. It was covered. So we went with the delineation that was less than three years old by something that you had agreed upon, apparently, for those two houses that are directly downgrading of, of this line. 
we since then had Jarvis land survey and go back and replace the wetland flags that uh, 2C, 1C, and 30B, 29B, 28B, and that what we proposed was to restore the forested area by taking and looking at each stump, red maple stumps, red oak stumps, and anything five inches in diameter or greater, we were going to plant the sapling of two and a half inches in diameter, a fair size sapling that would DBH in, in place of each one of those cut trees and then plant it also with a herbaceous layer. Remove any the last of the wood chips. I did have the landscapers through the Elkinsons remove the wood chips so we could see what was down there. And then the Quinn Engineering had designed everything to be away from that buffer. We don't have a DEP file number yet. We're here for to see what else the commission might want from us. Did, um, did, did you test for hydric soils? We, we did upgrade in. That's what those orange flags were, upgraded. Okay. The problem is that when we went to the site, uh, actually this past Saturday, all the stakes have been pulled out. Um, so I think the, the area needs to be restaked. Yes, sir. Given the fact that um, we, we couldn't, even if we were inclined to close a public hearing, uh, we couldn't um, issue uh, an order of conditions because there's no DEP file number. Yes, sir. Uh, my suggestion would be to, if you would, to just uh, restake it so that we can, we'll take another visit and hopefully maybe even go there with you. Yes, sir. Uh, and since the next meeting's not gonna be for at least another month, right? Uh, we could then make arrangements to meet with you at the site. Hopefully there won't be any snow on the ground and we'll have a better idea of uh, the, the actual site conditions. Yes, sir. We might say one thing, and because I have to, I'm, I'm not maybe a complainer, but the, uh, when we sent Jarvis out, or my clients did, he stuck the flags on pieces of twig, and he says that was standard operating procedure. Because I, I looked at it, and I said, what? <laughs> and so we normally were going to have an oak stake there, now that it's been a mess, and a four-foot oak stake, one inch by one inch, stake there exactly where that line was before, not something that's flimsy and falling on the ground. Because I did note that. That was our, ex our experience, too. Okay, so we'll, uh, would I work with Ms. Buteau to on the site inspection time, or would you set something up now? Um, you know, we can do this by email. My thought is okay. that probably will be after um, the first of the year. Yes, sir. But uh, perhaps the Saturday before um, the January 12th meeting. Sure, sure. Thank you. We can, you know, we can meet you there well, at 9 o'clock or some other we'll, time. We'll make sure it gets staked exactly, and then we'll inform you, send you the plan again or an email uh, to Ginger, Ms. Puto, and then she can inform you. And we'll look at the Saturday before the 12th, hopefully. All right, and obviously we have your assent to continue the hearing. Uh, we request a continuance, please. Okay. Um, is there a motion to continue the public hearing for 54 Prospect Street to January 12th? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there Thank any discussion? You, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank aye. you, Karen. It's a vote. Um, Ginger, what time would that be? Is that 7? Yeah, we'll do 7. Okay, so it'll be 1.12 at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. We have one more. Okay, and then the next matter on our agenda is the um, uh, notice of intent to construct uh, an addition at 36 Pioneer Lane in Auburn. Is there a motion to open? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. Okay, Mr. Kravosky. Thank you again. I'm not sure if Ms. Buteau had seen any DP file number by now. We had filed it. Had you seen that it? One, that one did come in. That's it the only one that in. did come in. Thank you. This is an addition that's very tight. It's up against the Mass Pike. It, again, is on Pioneer Lane, which we mentioned earlier. This is at the very end at the cul-de-sac. A 16 by 16. The boulder retaining wall was basically, it must have been the, the delineation of the wetland at the time when there was no bylaw that would have kept your, um, you from not being right up against the wetland. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that open area and that hole, and I did have hydric soils down there, but then we have the wetland line running right along the wall. It does veer away a little bit because there's a little bit of fill uh, just at the toe of the slope of the wall near wetland flag 3A. It does go around the garden to the rear. There's a small piece of the garden that is in wetlands. And um, I told the gentleman to, to make sure that we clean up and if you went in the back, if there was some debris in the weapon that we have to take out of uh, a mattress and things. So I, I would ensure that we clean 
whatever's been thrown in the wetland to the rear, but I believe the wetland line might not be um, of contention. If that's the case, we did adhere to your 25 foot no disturbance zone, barely, but it did adhere to it. And then, um, I, and then there's the concrete that is brought out on the plan and if there's any question on that. So we, uh, we did see or visit the site on Saturday um, and uh, it, it was clear to us that the wetland is, is clearly delineated from, um, from the rest of the property. It also appeared, at least to my, my view, that the addition can be constructed without uh, any sort of wetland impact. Again, because just given the nature of where the wetland is, the fact that there is the garden that sort of acts as a buffer between uh, the wetland and, and, and the house and the area around the house. So um, that, that was just my observation. I don't know if anyone else has an, an observation. No. What you said. Patrick, any comments? No, the site was uh, as listed, well delineated, um, easy yeah. site to maneuver, so. Thank you. And, and Megan was also with us on Saturday. Any comments, Megan? Any comments, Megan? Oh. No clue what just happened. Okay. Um, is that me? Is this I don't even remember touching anything. Sorry. <laughs> no, all, all right. Testing one, two, three. Um, if there's no other, com is there any comment from the public on 36 Pioneer Lane? If there is none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, signify it by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. All right, thank you, Mr. Provosky. Thank you for your time. Good holiday season to y'all. Same to we'll you. We'll see you at the beginning of, or the middle of January. All right, very good. Thank you. Well, thank you again very much. <clears throat> The next item on our agenda is a 710 public hearing, Gold Star Builders, a notice of intent to construct a single family home with associated utilities, driveway, and site grading at 63 Chestnut Street. Is there a motion to open? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. Is there anyone here on behalf of Gold Star Builders? Nick Passandola, Level Design Group, you know, the applicants. Uh, good, uh, evening. Uh, good evening, sir. You're welcome. How are we doing? So we're here tonight for a uh, tent for single family dwelling. This project appeared before the commission uh, a few months back for an RDA. The positive determination on. Yes. Uh, at the time, uh, we've prepared the filing, and we've also. Uh, to the commission on behalf of the property owner who owns the parcel to the east, uh, 65 Chestnut Avenue, for modification of an existing order of conditions. Uh, the commission granted a minor modification of that order of conditions to reduce the building footprint and the driveway footprint at that time. Uh, what the property owner would like to do is essentially construct the, the same size dwelling on uh, lot one, and we are using the current approved delineation, uh, which was established for five Chestnut Avenue. The site development and land disturbance activities are uh, approximately 54 feet away from the uh, approved. BBW line uh, which is located off site. All activities within the buffer zone are simply associated with site grading uh, and it will be used as a perpetuity as a backyard lawn. The proposed dwelling and driveway are located outside of the buffer zone. That pretty much uh, wraps up my presentation. We'll take any questions. Well, uh, Mr. Fasandola, we do not have a DEP file number, so even if we were inclined to close a public hearing, we really can't. We couldn't issue uh, an order of uh, conditions this evening. 
Um, I also believe that uh, we have at least one person from uh, who wants to offer some comment. But before we get to that person, um, any com we are familiar with the property. We've been out there several times. We did uh, go out there again on Saturday. Um, I mean, it hasn't changed, obviously. Uh, when would you propose to begin construction? Would this wait until the spring, or would you uh, try to get underway sooner? I know the property owner is looking to start as soon as possible. Um, they're looking to develop both sites uh, at the same time to minimize disturbance and mobilization of uh, equipment to the property, uh, and, you know, minimize impacts to the neighborhood also with the construction. So I believe uh, the intent is to start as possible depending on how the, win the winter season goes. If it's uh, weather conditions aren't favorable, uh, it'll likely hold off until uh, early spring. I understand. So tell me, what uh, sort of steps would you take to mitigate the impact on the abutter who lives at 61 Chestnut Avenue during the construction cycle? As far as impacts, uh, well, we have everything's running essentially from uh, Chestnut Avenue to the, uh, we'll call it the uh, northwest corner of the property. So we have a proposed erosion sediment control fence uh, with uh, a straw wattle along the back edge where pr proposed site disturbances. Uh, we'd be more than happy to coordinate with the property owner if they had any uh, specific requests. There's going to be no permanent vegetation along that side of the property as there's an approved 15-foot wide sewer easement that we have to maintain access for through that area. So we're going to be um, made, you know, maintaining that clear path for the access easements. Other than that, uh, we would just abide by standard uh, construction timing and um, outlook of operation. Two single-family dwellings, they should be constructed relatively quickly. Uh, minor site activity for excavation of the foundations and construction of the driveway, and then it would just be the construction of dwellings. So it, it seems to me, I'm sorry, it seems to me the first thing you're going to need to do, though, is to clear the vegetation at, uh, that abuts the street, all those trees and, and that other vegetation, correct? That is correct, yes. Uh, the majority of the lot will need to be cleared, uh, just be based on current site grade. Uh, and we have cited the house as a walkout basement to minimize grade uh, towards the resource area. So we'll be doing a little bit of filling along the front so the house will essentially appear at grade um, from Chestnut Avenue. But all that area will be required to be uh, cleared. Okay. All right. Very good. Any comment from uh, the board? Um, have you taken into consideration when you're doing these two houses now, you're planning on doing a, a, a full basement, correct, in both units, walkout basements? Just, just, um, I'm just, I'm thinking like as far as what the height of the water table is, um, and given that there is a history documented of um, water issues in that area when the development was done 20 years prior to this, which has, you had nothing to do with that. Um, I just didn't know if that was something you were considering uh, when you're doing the construction here because of the uh, history of water issues. So once we get the site cleared, uh, I believe our intent is to some test pits in the location of the foundations to establish groundwater through that area. And then we'll need to comply with current building requirements and either provide uh, some sort of perimeter drain, uh, if we can daylight that properly, or we have to provide a, uh, an interior pump system. Now you, um, you're you going to be tying into uh, town sewer and you'll have town water too, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Uh, so town you, water and sewer are located within Chestnut Avenue. Right, so you haven't done a deep hole test to determine the height of the water table in that area, right? To date, I have not. Uh, I don't know if the landowner has hired a geotechnical consultant. I can uh, coordinate with them on that, but I don't believe any deep hole testing has been done to date. I mean, I think what, um, what Tom is getting at is that um, <clears throat> if for some reason, if there's a high water table there, it may require you to, to be bringing in fill material. Is that something you've considered? Well, we 
we are still in the front of the property, and uh, if, if, if necessary, we would look into uh, providing additional snow on the back. We could do uh, a three-quarter walkout uh, step up. You know, that's all going to have to be figured into the building uh, foundation design once we get to that point. Okay. All right. Thank you. I believe um, um, uh, Ms. Dion, are you available? Yes, my concerns are going to be when you, when you say you're going to bring in a little bit of fill or how is, how is it going to impact the water in my yard? Okay, so Ms. Dion, first of all, um, you, you live and own 61 Chestnut Avenue, is that correct? Yes. Okay, yeah. and if you could just repeat um, what your concern is with respect to the project that's proposed next to your home. The concern is when the prior builder built the house and raised the property up, it made my dad wet. And lost trees, we lost vegetation because of the wet footprint. There's a very high water table there. I've submitted some kids to the conservation district, and it's a very steep drop off from the street to go down to the level area of the yard. My concern is how are you going to grade that with the house and how is it going to affect the grading towards my property? Is it going to put more water in it? Okay, Ms. Dion, we caught, I think, most of what you had to say. There were some drop-offs, but I think we understand what you were, um, were saying. You're concerned about the water table and what impact yeah. the construction would be or would have on your home. Is that right? Yes, yeah. and, and, and not only during the construction time, but the product, how it's going to impact my yard. Uh... Okay. I'm curious, have you ever had any problems with water in your basement? Uh, not really, no. Okay, all right. Um, well, in any event, uh, Mr. Fasadola has... Violent, <clears throat> but not me, problem. All right, thank you. Do you have any other comments? No, it's just uh, my concern is going to be the effect on my property. Understood. All right, thank you. Is there any uh, comment from um, the audience on 63 Chestnut? Sir, can you, and you are? Uh, my name is Jerry Mario. I live at 21 Oxford Street North. Uh, I believe that's the top property there, parcel A. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that, um, I share some of my concerns uh, with Ms. Dion. Um, I just want to bring to light that, that uh, living in, in that parcel A for the last eight years, mm -hmm. uh, there's been standing water in my front yard, which is <clears> at the top there, and also that other lot, there's standing water there constantly. So my, my concern is, is one thing, if you look at the elevation from the street, and I understand there's, they're gonna slope some of that towards the street, but if you just look at the gross elevation, it's like seven feet mm -hmm. from oh. my yard to the street. We've been there, sir. Yeah, so I, <clears throat> I just have real worries that, um, uh, just about erosion, about it flooding, and what happens in five years when my front yard and my pond become one and the same. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Sir, I remember when you applied uh, with uh, with us for your home. Yep. So, and you're right; it's been been a while. So, in any event, <clears throat> because uh, there's no DP file number, because I think we have some other questions, um, we cannot <clears throat> close a public hearing this evening. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. So, Mr. Fasandola, you've heard the concerns of the abutters. I don't know if you can find a way to address them. Where our next meeting is going to be on January 12th, so if you can perhaps um, you know address those concerns of the high water table or concerns about erosion or flooding, I think the abutters would greatly appreciate it. So just just to kind of clarify, the water table is the water table. There, I mean, we can't change that. We can't change the, the neighborhood conditions uh, as they exist today. All we can do is mimic the existing drainage patterns. And, you know, as you can see by the plan, we have detailed grading along the back, which is going to convey the majority of the surface runoff towards the resource area, towards the wetland, towards the pond, where the water currently is traveling today. Um, there, I don't believe there's any other additional site features we can provide to alleviate any any water concerns or issues that currently exist for the abutting parcels. You know, the site's graded so it runs towards the pond, towards the wetland area. 
Uh, we do understand that we have to comply with current building code standards with regard to foundation drains and lighting those or providing a proper system to manage uh, groundwater around the foundation structure. And, you know, that will be accommodated during our building application and the final design of the building. But as far as uh, increased uh, water or flooding of parcel from the development of a single, a small single family dwelling, you know, the footprint of this dwelling is you know, 1,300 square feet uh, and has a small driveway, there's going to be no impact to the abutting parcels regarding uh, stormwater uh, from this property. Well, in any event, in any event, sir, we're not uh, we're not making a decision this evening. So, and I assume we have your permission to continue the public hearing. No, understood. With the with, without a file number, uh, we cannot close. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Ginger. What would uh, the next? Seven oh five. All right. So, is there a motion to continue the public hearing for uh, Gold Star Builders, sixty three Chestnut Avenue, to seven oh five p.m. on January twelfth? So moved. So moved. All right, is there a second? My second. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> I, I they plan on raising the level. Huh? They plan on this, a whole lot. <clears throat> um, Ms. Dion, with the public, we've continued the matter to join. Ms. Dion, we've continued the public yeah. hearing to January 12th at 7.05 p.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> the next matter on tonight's agenda is the 7.15 public hearing. Uh, Michael Jarvis, a request for determination of applicability to remove uh, three trees at 8 Booth Road in Auburn. Is there a motion to open? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Uh, <laughs> any discussion? Pictures. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Um, Mr. Jarvis, are you here? Aye. Why don't you come on up? They didn't pull my picture. So, good evening. So, as you will remember, we went to your property on Saturday. And um, we had an opportunity to look at your trees um, up close and personal. And um, they certainly do appear to need to be removed. So I think, um, I mean, I think that was the consensus of the four of us who were present, who also happened to be the four of us that are attending tonight's meeting. So um, I have no other comments except that we think it's, uh, it's time to do it. Absolutely. So when would you, um, when would you have it, the work done? Um, so I have uh, Go Tree Services. They're out of Gra Grafton. I just have to reschedule with them. So hopefully, you know, as soon as possible. But my expe expectation probably within the next month. Okay. <clears throat> and I think, as you know, uh, obviously there's an intermittent stream that runs down slope. Mm -hmm. We would just um, um, encourage your um, tree cutter to keep everything out of there. Yep. You the, know uh, you so the quote right now is to remove everything. So they'll, you know, they'll leave the stump, but they'll remove all debris so um nothing should be impacted with the stream all right very good okay well um we'll vote on this tonight and you'll be hearing from us shortly okay excellent all right thank you i appreciate it thank you guys you're welcome yep. okay <clears throat> the next item on our agenda for this evening is the 720 public hearing Uh, Mike Pham and Osip intend to construct a driveway at 92 Tinker Hill Road in Auburn. Is there a motion to open? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. Good evening, sir. Good evening, <coughs> good evening. Um, I, I think you gone out there and take a look at it last time when you were at 92. We did. We did. And boy, is it a long road. That's, that, that was the only way to get the hammer head in. Right. Yeah, so um, we're, we're curious, how many uh, lots do you plan on developing at the back end of the property? It's only one lot. So we, I one house? Get, yeah, one house only. Okay. Yeah, so I, I got that house and then 104, which has no conservation at all. Right. Um, the only conservation I have here was at the beginning of the driveway. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the, the bylaws for, for hammerheads, I have to go through the frontage of the, 
um, lot. So I, I, I think that you know, when, when I made the filing, um, I, I made a mistake. It was actually 17 feet away from the, uh, the, the, the vegetated wetlands. Then you're going to need a waiver from us. And so in order to get away from a mush, you need to show that there's no practicable alternative. Well, I mean, the only, the only way uh, is to ask for planning board to see if they're allowed. Because I, I did create a, an easement before I sold the lot of mm -hmm. uh, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. as, as you noticed on the plan, I dotted over and down. So that way, um, I stayed as far away from the, from the wetlands as possible. Understood. But because of the bylaw, um, I'm pretty sure I have to go through the front entrance. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I went in and I dot to the left. Uh, to, to hit my easement, so that way the, I'm, I'm more than 25 feet away from the wetland. And as you see, you know, the wetland goes down there as I go further in, I'm further and further away, so. Right, understood. Um, so apparently you, um, you don't have a DEP file number either. I, I, I file online, so I was just waiting for it. No, I understand, and it, I think you've been here, so we can't, we couldn't um, close the public hearing tonight anyway. So what we'll do, we did go out, um, we did take a look. Um, I mean, I, I think it's pretty straightforward as you've indicated. Um, so I think at this point, what we'll do is, is we will, with your permission, of course, we'll continue the public hearing to our next meeting and then we will um, act on it at that time. Hopefully, I have a DEP number. Yeah, it's not on. Hopefully, what? I'll have a DEP that number by then. Uh, you, yeah, I think you will. I think four weeks is probably enough time. Okay. I must not have okay. a file. Have, does it look good or this? Yeah, I just have one question. Yeah, Approximately yeah. how long do you anticipate that driveway will probably be once? Uh, 600 feet. Really? I thought it was, honestly, looking at it, I thought it was even further than that because I, I know it's quite a good sized parcel. So. Yeah, so, so it goes goes all the way down, it dots down to the left mm -hmm. um, to, to open space. So I'm planning to keep every tree that's there. Yeah. I, I'm trying to make it private. Um, sure. Because it's, it's actually going to be my personal house. So. Mm -hmm. Understood. And then the one right next to it over here. So I, I, I had 30 acres and I was trying to do a. Um, a cul-de-sac, but just the cost yeah. of the cul-de-sac is too much. It, so I ended up doing two hammerhead lots, which was, I, you know, I, I was more happy to save all the land. So mm -hmm. um, my parents going to be on the other side. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Nice, it's a nice piece of land. So, Ginger, would that be 710? Yes. Okay. So is there a motion to continue the public hearing for uh, the driveway at 92 Tinker Hill Road to January 12th at 710 p.m.? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. All right, Mr. Pham, we'll see you on January 12th at okay, 7, thank 10 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Folks, are you here for something in particular? Okay, and <laughs> can, you, can you tell us what property that was? Okay, and you actually did do that? Okay, we'll take you next, so can you come up? Mm -hmm. Be careful. It's pretty much pictures I took. <clears throat> We wanted to see. All right, thank you. That's the water coming down from the car dealership. Okay. Down on the Rock Road. Mm -hmm. You didn't seem to think my problem was with 25 Penrock Road. It was well, something I, else. Well, as I said to you, I think you need an engineer who's going to be able to talk about it. I mean, I, I, mean, I think the pic, don't get me wrong, I think the pictures are helpful, but I think it takes more than that. I have video too. I have videos if you need video. Over what period of time, though? At same same time. Okay. With those taken. Uh, we will we will add this to our file. Yeah. That's um, right. And uh, actually, Penrock was not on our agenda for this evening, but um, I mean, we can. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you scared them off. I don't know, sir. <laughs> In any event, what we'll do is we'll add this to our file. There is nothing uh, pending right now. If they do, go ahead and file a request of determination or a uh, notice of intent. You'll get notice of it, and then you can appear. But I do appreciate you um, taking these photographs. Yep. 
and uh, we'll revisit this at a later date. I appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. <clears throat> so in terms of other business, I see in a notation at the irrigation pond at the, the pond at the golf course. Yeah, they're supposed to be on to, because they want, Lake Solitude wants to put the golf course on with their other treatments. Okay. And we want it to be separate. You had stated that we that you wanted it to be a separate um, filing. Yes. So they wanted to be on to talk about it. And are they on? It doesn't look like it. So um, we're going to continue with that. We'll continue it, and I will remind them about this. Okay. And then with respect to 190 Washington Street, um, we had sent in a, a basically a season desist, and I think you were advised that in fact Eastland Partners, who should know better, was actually doing the um, the site work, correct? Yes, and our 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 contact gentleman, mm -hmm. Steve O'Connell, right, did not know about it. He didn't know about it. He he didn't know that this happened. Uh -huh. He he got the call from the um, the people that filed for the lot three. Okay. Um, and he called me up. He's like, I'm going out there right now, and I'm going to go fix this. Okay. And he emailed me um, right before this and said, I've got something that come, came up. I'm not going to make it tonight. Right. I'll be at your next meeting. Okay. So one week, uh, we'll include this as other business. Um, I guess the question would be, do we need to then issue the cease and desist to Eastland Partners? Um, I mean, he said he's going to take care of it. But He said he's going to take care of it. So, I mean, I, I don't know that's... Maybe a letter would be helpful. We can do a letter. I mean, like I said, I only did it to the other company because that's, well, that's where right. the order of conditions because was. That's exactly right, and that's when we found the violation. So we didn't know that right. Eastland was doing the site work. Correct. Okay, um, I can come up with something, I think. Okay. So we can, uh, why don't we continue that to our meeting on January 12th. Okay. With respect to the others. I'd like to add something to that also, Mike. Please. Um, I'd like to know if they did any stormwater reports. Anytime there's over three quarters of an inch of rain under the EPA regs, they did generally, you know, keep a record of it. Um, basically, I think they can basically just use like weather.com anywhere that says, yeah, we got three quarters of an inch or more rain. Um, they likely took reports. Okay. And that would kind of give us an idea too. You know I mean? Generally what they do is just make sure that all the erosion control measures are in place, that Absolutely. kind of thing. But, um, I, I did bring up um, at the last meeting um, when you guys talked about the the enforcement order, those piles. The soil. That's right. The, the dirt, dirt piles. Mm -hmm. um, I did bring that up when I talked to Steve, and he said that those piles are an ongoing moving. The, the moving around piles the property. that they're not always there. Sure. Or you around. know, mm -hmm. he he said so. Um, you know, they will do something with that to cover it. Um, but like I said, he said that they are an ongoing yeah. thing. That they're, like I said, that they're not. They're they want, not they probably want to make a level to the road, I would imagine, because they want to develop right along the road. So they're going to be moving a lot of earth that's on site. Right. We, just, we were just concerned that the piles were so incredibly high. It was just kind mm -hmm. of, it, it was odd. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He said that they're just always using it in other places. And yeah. so, but I did meant, bring that up to him that, that that was a concern with you guys. Okay. And I didn't put it in the enforcement order because that was not part of the oh, lot three. Lot three, sure, sure. All right, that's fine. Um, the next item uh, was uh, one Gwen Drive, and these were trees behind 33 Chestnut Avenue. Uh -huh. So we went out there again on Saturday, and there's no question that trees were being cut and probably not being cut all that well. However, that area is totally upland. So there's absolutely nothing that gives us jurisdiction. And so, I mean, I think, don't get me wrong, I think the, the homeowner at 33 is upset by what happened. Um, and, you know, but again, I, that I advised her that um, it did not appear that there were any, there was anything within our jurisdiction to do anything about it. So I don't honestly know what her recourse is. 
I suggested that she speak to the, the owner and maybe they can work out some sort of understanding about how it's going to, the trees are going to be, be taken care of. Because I think her concern was that they, whoever was cutting the trees wasn't doing a particularly um, good or careful job and they were doing it at inappropriate times. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to ask you about um, the Lester Street Solar Farm. So um, did the enforcement order go out to them? It did go out to them, yes. Okay. Yep. And obviously um, they're not here tonight. They're not here tonight. No. Nope. Did you get any response from them? I have not. No. And I have not gotten the green card back yet. No. All right. So why don't we so. do this? Wait, when we get the green card back, let's see if we can do a follow-up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And have them make sure that they attend or they understand they need to attend at our January 12th meeting. Yep. Okay. Great. Yep. Yeah, I was waiting to, to get the card back to put it on here because I was afraid that they weren't going to get it in time to make it to this one. So, um, and that's, that's fair. And I, I followed up with it online also with the tracking number mm -hmm. and the tracking number said that they didn't even receive it yet. Mm. Okay. So. And then do we have the meeting minutes for August 12th? We do. Um, we did also uh, have 10, 10, 10, rotary. 10 rotary. 10 rotary. You're going to... Oh, yeah, 10 rotary. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. So we, um, we were actually quite um, ambitious on Saturday. We went to 10 Rotary Road. Um, I had taken some pictures, which um, uh, you posted. Uh, the work that's being done is in compliance with whatever plan was submitted with us. Orange control measures are in place. We didn't notice any issue with um, with siltation or erosion, um, and so right now it looks like the project is uh, proceeding the way it should be proceeding. We didn't see any violation. No. It's not. That bottom wall is. Well, it, it's a, the, the construction is still in progress. How close is that wall that's there? <laughs> to, to what? To the wall? It what? There's numbers there, but they're kind of hidden in the green. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. We do have dimensions on there. Because the last picture... Can you, can you post them again, please? So that curved wall there? Right. Looks like... So you think there was a deviation from the plan? That's on the one on the right here. Which, right, which is showing right 14 here. feet. Showing right. 14 and 10. So you right. couldn't, ten. couldn't see that on the picture on my phone. Ten. Couldn't see ten any feet. of these dimensions. Mm -hmm. Because which it's not... Which is 10 feet, with, which is that one right yeah. there. That doesn't look like it's We had this feet. picture, but we you couldn't see those dimensions on the picture that I had on my phone. And this wall up here mm -hmm. is not curved. That's true. Well, then, to the extent that the property owner has made a change to his plan, he needs to, um, he's going to, um, he's going to account for that with us. And then... Was there any sort of everybody saying a boat ramp? Right. Was there a boat ramp? There is going to be a boat ramp. Okay, so that was also that was also shown on the plan. It's not supposed to be a boat ramp. It's not called a boat ramp. He was using it for his golf cart. I golf cart. He calling that. Yeah. Right. He was calling it a golf cart. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was it was quite steep for a boat ramp. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a. On the screen, I don't, because I didn't download everything on the screen. It should show right on here. Actually, the, the grade is more than there. one. Yeah, the, uh, the, the grade, grade is more than one to one. one. It's um, probably, yeah, that's always forty-five degrees, degrees, right? Yeah, yeah. Extremely yeah. Steep. yeah. It comes to I a mean, landing. I, the only thing I downloaded on on this for this was the pictures that he took because Mike said that it was was all set, so I didn't download everything. Um, well, then maybe we have to revisit it. But, yeah, in his plans, he said it was a golf, and to you guys, 
Yep. He said it was supposed to be a for a golf cart yep. for his parents. Well, right. that doesn't he, make any sense. He reiterated sense. that actually to, while we were right. there, so. so um, yeah. and everybody around and the, the water department for the lake called and is concerned that if it's a, if it's a boat ramp. Okay. So, um, because he, sh I don't think he's supposed to be putting a boat ramp in. So they're concerned about the, the steep of a boat ramp being put in. Well, then we need to send him a letter. But, yeah, like I said, that last wall was supposed to be rock. Well, it, it, I will say this, all right, and, you know, you're putting me in the position of defending the applicant. Um, I think it's a project. It, the project has not been completed. Mm -hmm. He obviously needs to file a certificate of compliance with us, or he's going to need to get a certificate of compliance from us. Right. Um, I will say to you that... Um, this is a plan that was not done by um, a professional architect. It's something he did. Uh, and I, I'm not inclined. I normally don't give the applicant the benefit of the doubt. I think w looking at that and then looking at the picture, I think you're right. I think he did make a change to the plan. I think to the extent that the plan deviates from what was submitted to us, there has to be an amendment. And I think he needs to be advised of that. And to the extent that in terms of the war, you said that the war department has reservations about a boat ramp being installed. Mm -hmm. I want, I'd like to see that in writing so that that can be uh, incorporated yeah. or provided to, uh -huh. to him, to Mr. DeFutis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, let's do this. We'll continue with our next meeting. Yeah. Get me the information that I've requested and then um, I'll send him a letter okay. and advise him that he needs to um, he probably does need to come in to see us with an, and maybe just, he should have an architect or someone do a more detailed plan. Okay. okay. All right. Like I said, Ginger too, I wish that we could have read these dimensions, but what I did is I took a picture on my phone and I had the picture of the phone, but you couldn't yeah. obviously you could. mix in with the green. Right. Because that would have stood out like, four, that's not 14 feet. Obviously it's right there. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So can, we, closest... can we keep this copy here? Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the, the closest part to the water mm -hmm. is supposed to be 10 feet. 10 feet, yep, on the right. And yeah, because he's supposed like to, right, he was closer. supposed to go from 5 feet back to 10 feet. Push it back. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm saying that, yeah. <clears throat> right. So, um, you know, because the, the water department, somebody from the water department had called me, and he's like, I, just, I got somebody to call. Mm -hmm. and was complaining about this. I says, well, I've, I've gotten so many calls about this. Mm -hmm. I says, the only thing that I can say is this pictures. Mm -hmm. And that's well, when somebody finally sent in pictures. When people it. call to complain, do they identify themselves? The only one that's ever done that is one person. That's it. Okay. You know? All right. So, um, so that's when I finally said pictures. And that's when somebody finally sent in some pictures of it. Okay, very good. Yeah. All right, well, we will revisit this issue then. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so um, let's do the order of conditions for um, 36 Pioneer Lane. Um, before we do that, yeah. Um, according to this, it says a DEP number has not yet been issued. No, there was one, right? For it, it came okay. in Monday. Okay, gotcha. It's the only one. It, it's the only one, so. Okay, so is there a motion issue in order of conditions for 36 Pioneer Lane? I make a motion that we issue a standard order plus the following special conditions. Mm -hmm. Number one, number two, number three. <clears throat> the comment from DEP on that. The board have those number five, number eight, number nine, number 11, <clears throat> and they're not looking for a waivers. I believe that's it. Okay, very good. So 
um, there's a motion to issue uh, NORA conditions plus um, special conditions one, two, three, five, eight, nine, and 11. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? I just wanted to note that uh, within it, they, for a structure that is only a, you know, it's, it's a 16 by 16 edition, they have stormwater um, BMPs being put in place as well, which read right through, I found it kind of fascinating, the, the orientation of them, so. Um, anyways, I, uh, I just wanted to note that and. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Are you gonna second? I second. Okay, is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. And I think the last item we have is um, the, the meeting minutes for August 11th. Mm -hmm. Yes. Question Oh, that's right. Thank you. Why don't we do that next time? For uh, Ape Booth um, Road, uh, is there a motion? I make a motion that we issue a negative determination of applicability. Okay, is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Thank you, Caleb. I have no changes to the meeting minutes for August 11. Um, I have two minor changes on the second page. My name is missed up twice. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. How dare they? There's no. I need. know, right? There's no a, there's no A. The first A needs to come out. Yeah, it's right. It's right on the first page. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. As, 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 and then on the very last page, where it says Thomas Allen emotion, it says three one three to one swap. I'm assuming that should be slope. Oh. Where is it? I'm sorry. What? Slope. Slope instead of slop. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I got. Okay. Well, thanks for picking that up. Yeah. Okay, um, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of August 11, 2021 as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote, very good. Um, is there any other business? Uh, I have a quick, quick question, actually. Sure. Um, do drawdowns come before us? Not usually, right? What was that? I'm sorry. Dr drawdowns of draws. Drawdowns they don't come before of, us. Uh, of water bodies come before Dollar. us. Do they have to file any sort of anything to do drawdowns? No. No. Never have. I just I noticed the other day that Stoneville uh, was uh, it, it was dropped dramatically overnight, mm -hmm. and uh, as a result of that, Stoneville Pond up by like Rochdale Street was essentially high and dry the wetlands were all high and dry over there and it's slowly it's refilled uh since so i was thinking to myself either there was a sudden release of water or there was water for a drawdown that they drew down far too much water and it's come back to a normal level but it's come back to a normal level so it defeats the purpose of a drawdown hmm. so those the, the, the two things <laughs> in my head that i couldn't figure out yeah so part of me wants to say yes, because Holland does it every year. Um, so let me check with the conservation in Holland. Okay. And I can get back with you. Okay. They've, right? they've never notified us. No. But I, it, I didn't think, I don't think it was a yearly thing. I think it was like a every so many years Right. They had the highway had to do it, but I don't I don't remember correct exactly. Okay. So I would have to check 
Um, but yeah, I would have I would have to double check with that. Okay. But I like I said, I know Holland ha Holland has to do it every year because we have a we have a dam um, for the the Holland Reservoir. Mm -hmm. um, but I can check. Okay. I'm know. just curious to know who would be notified. You know, in the in the case of a drawdown. And it's, if it's done by the water district, do they notify DPW? Do they notify the town manager? Um, Just generally speaking. Generally speaking. Yeah. I, I think it's the town, the town manager, I, I believe. Okay. They own, to the chair, they own, the Okay. I mean, I don't think they need to either, but I, I think, you know, it's a valid concern. If there's a reason why they're doing it, it would be kind of nice to know why. You know, I mean, to the extent that it may, you know, have an impact on the wellness, I think, you know, right. that kind of gives us a reason to to inquire. Yeah, it, it just, it, I did, I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I just noticed that it, it really did leave a number of wetlands completely dried for a period right. of time that... You know, it yeah. just drained a few, a few of the wetlands right. upstream. So, and I know for for Holland, this is they usually do it in in November, mm -hmm. October, November. They do it um, right before winter for the snow and the ice yeah. and and all of that um, because because of the change. Yeah. And then when the ice melts and everything, that's when in the spring, that's when we get our rush. Yeah. Um, and the water level goes right, right back up. Yeah, I, so. a huge purpose for the uh, aquatic plant control too, but it just, it, they only drew it down and then it came back within two weeks, which is not yeah. typical. Just well, it's it, not gonna do anything as far as it doesn't do anything aquatic, but it's rain, the wetlands right. and made done the ice. Well, we got, right. we got a lot of rain right after, because I noticed True. when they draw down, when we, we drew down this year, mm -hmm. we got all that rain. Yeah. So our water level in, in Holland went right back up. Yeah. So, and they only draw down once. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any other business? If there is none, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Is um, there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, participating tonight. I hope you have um, a very happy holiday season, a happy new year, and uh, we'll see you on January 12th. Okay.